Oh no! Now when I finally beat chapter 6, everyone's gonna tell me I didn't do it properly and I wasn't there and oh Foreman, it was so much harder when it first came out. Oh, spare me. Morning. I swear a lot. Hello friends and welcome back to Limbus Company. Today's today, Canto 5, and I'm not gonna sit here and wax lyrical for too long, we're just gonna get on with it. Error compensation, thank you very much. Yes, I do appreciate it. That's a lot of lunacy. I'm still only gonna do one temple per episode though because it's good to conserve lunacy. First things first, not that actually this. I want Goth Gregor and you will give it to me. You will give it to me. I demand Goth Gregor. It's kind of important for my whole image. I don't think I got him. So, yeah, looking forward to Canto 5, honestly. We're here now. People have said that 35 is around about a decent level to be doing Canto 5 in, so we're doing all right. And in fact, with uh, Rodeo and Ishmael, we'll probably breeze through the first half, but no one ever said that the first half of Canto 5 was actually difficult. So not like I've ruined the challenge or anything like that. And we're not going to get a level up by the end of it because story progression XP is fucking poor, as we've seen. Nothing for me. I just wanted a Grigor. Oh. We still have a few more preparations to do, though. Like, claiming all this shit. Ooh. That's pretty cool. Electric screaming. And Don Quixote got a new ego. I don't think I have... I don't think I've ever gotten a different ego of Don Quixote. I think it's always been Sangre de Sancho. Ooh. Ooh. We have so many must-so egos. Actually, we don't. We have three, including the one you start with. Oh my god, 1100 lunacy. Jesus Christ, I forgot how much you get during a battle pass. This shit's nuts. Good stuff. We'll have a quick look at those egos so I can learn more about them. Electric screaming. Uh, gain envy resin. Minus two attack weight. So that's really fucking good for middle sister, isn't it? Surely. Considering that's already like all in on envy and shit. There's a lot of potential there. Okay, cool. I like it. Very good. Corrosion is indiscriminate, targets randomly, Envy Resin attack weight, Envy Resin more damage, charge, 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 I don't deal with charge yet. If the target is defeated at the end of this unit, slash or Envy affinity skill end, gain one attack power up next turn. Sure. Charge count, charge count, number of affected allies grows by highest Envy Resin. Oh, so if you can get proper Envy Resonation going, you can basically give charge count to the entire fucking team. Well, not the entire team, that's probably a bit much, but most of the team. It also inflicts rupture, which is nice, I suppose. Attack weight, if a student has 10 plus charge count, spend up to 20, deal plus 2% more damage for every charge count consumed. That presumably, yeah, it only goes up to 40%, but that's presumably a lot of fucking damage. Combat start, 4 plus resin, gain 2 offense level up and 2 defense level up. If the resin was an envy resin, apply the above effects to the 2 units adjacent to this unit on the dashboard as well. So, buffs the entire team. Very fucking nice. Alright, so, <clears throat> obviously, I can't have Magic Bullet Otis yet. We don't know specifically when while Purgish Nacht is uh, next going to occur. That's totally fine. In the meantime, I will bring in Enclair because he does burn, so it all works out. We'll keep Hongle on the bench because apparently he's very good at providing count. Yep, that seems good. Okay, so we'll do that. Uh, all we'll have to do is make sure we manage Enclair's SP count, which basically just means guarding every now and then, I suppose. Actually, uh, it occurs to me, Yi Sang will help keep his SP in check, so that's fine. He's level 35, Ryoshi is level 35, Merso is level 35, and Gregor's level 35. I can level up Hongle later if we want to use him for a dungeon or like a seven seven sinner fight or whatever, because I'm only going to be using Enclair until um, I can get Magic Bullet Otis. Basically, this is still intended to primarily be a lure team. I'm not going to run Enclair and Magic Bullet Otis because I think that's too much of a deviation, frankly. I had an idea in mind for this team, and I wanted to stick with it, so I shall. I'm going to uptie Gregor to four, because he's my boy. And I want him to do well. We're taking this seriously. I'm probably going to uptie this entire fucking team going into this. I want them to do well. 
I don't care if that results in uh, inefficient moves and poor use of resources because in the process of doing a series on this, I've had to make inefficient decisions for the purposes of showing stuff off and finding stuff out and having fun, you know? I haven't done my mirror dungeon yet this week because I'm literally recording this on Thursday. Today is Thursday, so uh, I'll do that and then I'll have plenty more resources to play with. It's all good, but the evil defining, it's time. We're finally there. Let me do one more check to make sure. Yep, we're there. Okay, there's nothing more left to do. No more reason to put it off. We're going in. Boats. I see boats. 36. That, how much was uh, Canto 4? Sorry, I'm not, I don't mean to put this off, but... Yeah, yeah, 54. 20 less chapters. Okay, yeah, this will be shorter. Unless the cutscenes are longer, which they might be. Setting sail. We're in it. Ishmael, I hope... I hope. That's it. It hasn't been so long since this bus, I mean bus bow, was hounded by the sirens and the flashing green lights. The sinners were sitting uncomfortably, trying to get some shut-eye in the ship cabins, formerly known as the bus cabins. The thought of returning to their rooms didn't even seem to occur to them. Everyone's on edge because they know shit's about to get fucked. Yes, Faust. After gazing out the window for a while, Faust came to her feet and approached the helm, formerly known as the Wheel. Oh, it's Faust again. I don't need anything explaining right now, thank you. Well, you are going to have to explain that, yes. Faust? Faust? <laughs> <laughs> I missed your voice, Yi Sang. Yes, yes, it has arrived. Take it easy, buddy. It's only going to get worse. Oh, boy. It's going to be so good. Oh, fuck, no. I imagine the signal was actually received on our equipment, Sinclair, not like, you know, literally a signal. I was half right, maybe you're just blind, I don't know. Are you saying that Gondor calls for aid, Gregor? Does Lord of the Rings even exist in the city? Apparently Spongebob does. Splish splash, glub glub. And there we will die, and the ship will fall over, and I will drown. Very good, very good. She could be lying about that and just slapping buttons for all I know. No, Don Quixote, not really. It was the coasts and crabs on the beach. It was minor in comparison. Considering we haven't fucking gone anywhere, yeah. Unless I'm missing something, I don't think the crabs were that bad. <laughs> has been burying his face in that very bucket, which we will have to throw away. <laughs> I mean, we don't want those on the ship either, do we, Don Quixote, really? Thinking about it? I'd rather not have that on the boat. <laughs> well, Purig is not. <laughs> uh huh. And it's true. Not that I got to see any of them because I'm approaching this like a year late. False cause fallacy. I'm here now. You know you can't throw more than two concepts at Don Quixote at any given time. It's too much. 
명확하게 들어섰다면 이제 몸을 추스르고 긴장 상태에 돌입해야 한다고 본다. <laughs> Why would she do it so aggressively? No! Absolutely not! Get back on the deck! I want that deck to fucking shine! You gotta mop it till it sparkles, lass! Otis? Well, but it hasn't started yet. <laughs> I think Otis likes being on a boat. Or she doesn't. Otis suddenly leapt to her feet and began barking orders at the sinners. <laughs> oh great, you woke Heathcliff. Yeah, so, you know, chill a bit. <laughs> Do you really expect me to trust you kids and your fucking iPhones? I know danger when I've seen it. I was in the war. <laughs> slapdash last minute installation? What is this slapdash operation that we're running, truly? <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I think Ishmael would appreciate your, your vigor in this matter. I'm surprised these two haven't actually discussed this more. If there was anyone on the team who would probably listen to Ishmael's concerns, it probably would have been Otis, although she would have also been very like, Stop being scared and sit up straight. Do your homework. Comb your hair. Cut your hair, in fact. You keep tripping on it. I mean, better her than me, right? So, uh, the way I see it at this exact moment, don't know if it'll turn out this way, is Otis will in fact step up to the position, royally fuck it up, and then Ishmael will step up to the position, and it will presumably go better because she has a lot more experience in sailing. It's just a guess at the very start of the canto. I don't know. We'll see. Commander. Captain Otis, now that's an idea I want. Meanwhile, I'm sat nearby with like a tea and a newspaper and I'm like, huh? What? Oh, yeah, whatever. Yeah, uh, Captain, go for it. She continued before I even had the chance to reply. <laughs> She's having so much fun. <laughs> After an indeterminate amount of time, which I actually would have liked to have heard her speech, not gonna lie. Did you make sure to bring your notebooks? I like that Don Quixote likes learning, because she could have very easily been a character who's like, this is boring because I'm not fighting something. But she seems to find every new experience enjoyable, even if it's just new knowledge. Which I guess was reflected in her um, Encorp Uptie 3 cutscene, because she devoured the scripture on Nargle and Hammer. Presumably because she just loved learning about it, because I guess she just loves learning in general. Which is very cool. It's very specific. <laughs> I have a question, ma'am. <laughs> she takes to this position so naturally, I love it. So can I touch it? Uh... 
I mean, if only we had the designer of this bus and general scientist and uh, philosopher and philanthropist, uh, Faust, nearby. Alas, she has chosen to remain silent. <laughs> I don't think we have weapons. <laughs> An auspicious day indeed. Sure, why not? Hmm. So, You good? Do you need? Do you need your fifth nap of the day, ma'am? You said it all. 쓸데없이 겁만 만들고 소갈맹이는 제대로 되지 않은 것들이 소위 최신 기술이라는 가짜는 이런 말에 생겨나더군. These bleeding edge technologies, you kids and your MP5s and your iTunes and your smart players and your face pages and your bird tweets. A bird can't say X, stupid. You kids are ridiculous. Respectable, but we are presumably going to be facing like giant monsters or something, so we might need uh, an edge as opposed to no edge. Maybe a bleeding edge, I don't know. I should point out, I've been playing a lot of uh, Star Wars Empire at War recently, and I'm really into the fleet battles in that. So this whole, like, captain of the ship, we're gonna be a fucking crew of the ship, all hands on deck crap, is actually really resonating with me at the moment, and I like it a lot. Blood? What? Yeah. True comrades are born from amputated limbs due to infection and rampant bouts of scurvy, like real ship crews. I agree, Sinclair. It's because she's a natural leader. <laughs> Abandoned ship! <laughs> Captain first! <laughs> Save yourselves! <laughs> I have no fucking clue. <laughs> she proves to the world that I don't need technology to live. As long as I have a fucking rock in my hand, I can take anything. Oh no, she's gonna smash it, isn't she? Maximum output! How do you know what the power lever is? Oh god, we're going off of the automated- Oh god, no. Oh god, that was supposed to keep us away from all of the mean, horrible things. <laughs> oh god, no. <laughs> It's okay, Sinclair. I would have panicked in that situation as well because I'd have had no idea how the fuck to do that. <laughs> Let's go! You broke the. You broke the engine. Five hours. <sighs> That's true, that's true. We should have just let Karen get on with it. Wait, wait, so we're just stuck here? I guess we can still drive the ship. That's good. Okay, right, well, we're off to a fantastic start, truly. I'm sure Ishmael is not already you know, trying to build a fucking lifeboat in her room or something. The laws. There's no laws on the ocean, it's the ocean. <laughs> Captain Otis and her first mate, random seagull. 
자 하면 왼발을 돌리더라. <웃음> Like, this is funny, but I should point out that this is more <laughs> attempted leadership than Dante has ever done, and she's accomplished it in about 20 minutes. Young! 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 Because she's the bums. Because she's the captain, Heathcliff. If you'd stepped forward and been the captain, you could have done it. Are we gonna mutiny? <laughs> true, true, true. Also, she's old, like me. She's leading. Officers don't work. <laughs> See, look at Dante. <laughs> they get the idea. I mean, I didn't not give her permission to be that, so, you know, it is what it is. Well, she did say she's the captain, not the commander. I'm still the commander, but I don't do any commanding. Uh, that sounds like too much work. <laughs> yeah, this is sitting real well, isn't it? Flock off already! <laughs> How about we press gang the seagulls and make them run the ship? <laughs> I like the way you think, Heathcliff. You might be about to get a promotion. <laughs> Make it so. <laughs> Honestly, by the time you trained them to, you know, actually do it, we probably would have already got there, so it's pretty pointless. Want vroom vroom, no vroom vroom on the ocean. I don't think that's gonna work. I've never seen the word consultation carry so much ominous aura to it. <laughs> Gregor, just use your bug arm and stop smoking. Yeah, what's the actual reason there, Greg? Yeah, get back on the pedal, loser. So you're saying a more even pace? This doesn't need to be a forced march? I hear what you're saying. Yeah, but there's also like giant fish or something. I don't know. I didn't read the pamphlet. In case someone else gets the golden bow first, that is a concern. Oh. Greek Gregor, my boy, that's precisely what's going to happen at any moment. Fascinating. You almost said something smart. Well done. Huh? 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 <laughs> Well, that's nice, I suppose. Is something gonna eat us in the next 10 minutes? As in literally, as we speak, it becomes 9.57, 9.56, 9.55. Oh wow, this is a thing. Okay. Do go on. What do you mean again? I've never heard of this. 
로자, 당신이 대호수의 규칙을 알고 있을 거라는 예측은 없었는데요. 집감이 이런 방향으로 발달할 수 있다고 보기는. Did she actually read the thing that Ishmael gave her? 미안, 이번에는 아는 척좀 해보려고 했어. 매번 되묻는 패턴도 식상하잖아. <웃음> I just wanted you to think I knew. I don't know shit. 유사의 대우수에는 반드시 지켜져야만 하는 규칙이 있습니다. And we're about to break one, like ten minutes into our journey. 그리고 그리고 루시의 말씀과 달리 항구는 움직인답니다. <웃음> Oh. <laughs> like Coppers gonna spank the bad boys with a stick for breaking class rules. Heathcliff, where do you get your material from? I need it. <laughs> like Coppers. Stop right there, it's the boat police. Ting Ting got in and Seki. Mo Pun Han and Kutsig on Opso. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys, knock it off. I could almost hear a well timed sigh followed by honest but brutal piercing words. It was like someone recorded her sigh and played it in my head. But Ishmael was nowhere to be seen on the deck. <laughs> I want you to come contribute to the conversations again, or your tier list placement will drop. Nothing personal, it's just I have to be fair. She wasn't kidding. Ishmael remained in her room, not a peep to be seen or heard, despite the commotion. Not appearing once through all that's happened since the incident. Yep. Yeah, we need to fucking go. Can you guys get back to pedaling, please? Oh god, we spent three minutes just talking about it. Oh. We have to make 15 kilometers in seven minutes? How fast is this boat? That's not entirely unrealistic. A person, I mean, like, I can power walk at about 10 kilometers an hour. It's fucking tiring, but I can do it. This is pedaling, though, not walking. That's actually, yeah, pedaling would be even easier. Unless it has a lot of resistance. I don't know. It's not, it's a fucking generator pedal, not a fucking pedal bike. <laughs> I know for a fact that you won't, but why don't you fucking pedal for a while instead of just looking at your stupid clipboard? <laughs> I mean, the shoes probably help. <laughs> <laughs> if we leave you, you'll just stay on the ship and take up space. God bless you, Merso. Now, nary a complaint nor a whinge, she just keeps going. That's true, that's true. Listen to Merso. Credit to Faust, she appears to be pedaling as well, you know. <laughs> Good for her. I'm too busy to be tired. Three minutes remaining now. How far have we traveled? Faust, if you don't get tired, then why don't you explain what happens while we pedal? She said there's no time. Just step on it with your life. I'm finally going to step in and try and get you guys to hurry up. <laughs> this is squeak, squeak. Darren, Darren. 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 Darren,
God bless you, Hongler. Nary a complaint nor a whinge. Hongler and Miss So are my two most reliable employees. Bar none. Because they spend more time peddling and less time complaining. Every time you talk, you're just wasting more oxygen. Oh, turns out Hongler's actually had quite a <laughs> intensive workout regimen in his life. Okay. <laughs> it appears Dante's doing it as well, so credit to Dante. Oh god. We're not gonna make it in time. <laughs> uh, there's a seagull. <laughs> Why isn't the seagull pedaling? Stop freeloading on our boat and get to work. <laughs> Don Quixote's died. Dante, turn the clock. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. I would have cut out my audio because I was laughing, but there's some Maso ASMR for you. What an absolute don he is. <laughs> 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 10 seconds remaining. 4 seconds. Sinclair, in the amount of time it took you to say that, we ran out of time. <laughs> oh my god, we actually got out of there. I don't believe it. I almost don't actually genuinely believe it. That's a surprising success. Somehow we managed to escape the zone before Faust counted down to zero. Some sinners immediately threw themselves to the deck of the ship like limp puppets, while some looked like they'd just taken a quick rest at a park bench. Maybe they could keep going. So we made it somehow, but I can't be out of breath because I don't have a mouth. <sighs> I assume we would have if we had remained. It's not. I know for a fact. I can tell that it isn't. <laughs> oh, we failed. Oh no, we actually are okay because look, you can literally see the fucking line which we crossed to be out of the danger area. Wow, that's precise. The tranquil lake surface we just pedaled through was gone as though it was never even there. In its place was an immense something. Its innumerable legs or tentacles writhed, rising above the lake surface. I couldn't even tell where the thing ended and where the lake began. Did it burst from the lake or were we traveling unawares on its body this whole time? <laughs> <laughs> She's got a blobfish on her head. <laughs> Fun. And there's a squid. Ah, oh, I like the squid. That's good. I couldn't even find the right words to describe the magnitude of that thing. Its appearance sent waves across the water all the way to the zone we were in. Mephistopheles shook violently as though it was about to capsize. It need not be said that the sinners on the deck were given an untimely shower. Wow. I think that's the most concerned I've ever seen Rodia so far. So what happens when we inevitably get caught in one of these zones? Because every single zone that we only just make it at, make it through in time means the next zone is going to be even harder to get through. Right? We've all decided to just stop peddling or whatever, but we're still in another zone, presumably, and we still need to get out of there within a certain amount of time or die? Not bad. 
만일 저것이 우리를 한번더 공격하려 한다면 승산은 없다. Careful analysis dictates that it would fuck us up. 아니, 저것은 이곳에서는 우리를 내버려 둘 거다. And that's why we need to pedal. 그게 대호수의 규칙이니까. Mm-hmm. 이제 미뤄뒀던 설명을 할수 있겠군요. A boy, howdy, do I have a lot of explanations to give. 유사 대호수의 규칙은 여러 가지지만 지금 필요한 설명을 간단하게만 하죠. Reasonable, though you know the ones that aren't pertinent will become pertinent. 한 호수에서 일정 시간 이상 머무를 경우 각 호수만의 파도가 밀려옵니다. Be struck by the waves of each lake. 보통 저런 걸 파도라고 부르나? Yeah, well, you've never been on the Great Lake, have you? So there. 호수와 호수 사이를 넘어가는 것 또한 정해져 있는 시간과 조건이 각각 존재합니다. Aha. Uh -huh. Kind of seems like there are a lot of laws in place, not really as controlling measures, but as yo, we're on this lake, and there are so there's so much bullshit under it that we've created protocols to ensure that ships have a even a schmeckle of a chance to survive. You can follow them, or you can die, and we will have no like involvement in either aspect of that. It's all on you. Good fucking luck. Boy, 그러면 어디에 멈춰 있기만 하면 반드시처럼. Yes, we'll be whacked. 그래서 당연하게도 이 호수 위의 모든 것은 규칙에 맞추어 위치를 바꾸어 갑니다. Aha, aha. 그 목표를 향해 가는 방법도 그것에 맞추어 우리를 안내하고요. Yes, because the port's not going to stay still. Because if it did, it would get whacked. So, or at least maybe something worse would happen. I don't know. But the point is, it's moving around. So yeah. 혹시 그 규칙이라는 것에 대해 정리되어 있는 건 없나요? 제 방에는 유모가 가문의 규칙이 적힌 종이를 붙여두곤 했어요. 완전히 지키긴 어려웠지만. That's actually a surprisingly smart thing to request. That's when I heard a door open. Whoever opened it did so with obvious irritation. 기어코 파도가 왔었나 보네요. 그렇죠. Yeah, we just missed it. You missed it entirely. We might have died if you hadn't, you know, if you had, maybe, <laughs> if you had considered pedaling. It wouldn't have been so close, huh? But then again, she did say, I will only do what you tell me to do. So she wasn't just going to come out and start pedaling for no fucking reason. But for someone who was so concerned about our uh, general survival, it's not a good look, Ishmael. Imshell? Sorry, it's been so long, I don't remember your name. After such a long period of isolation, Ishmael staggered out of her room at last. Do you think... And I'm actually going to direct this at Faust as well, lest you think I'm just ragging on Ishmael here. I'm not. I'm also having a go at Faust here. Do y'all not think that this might have been pertinent information to provide when we were just waiting near the shore for god knows how long? I realized that the reason that that was a thing was because Kanto 5 took a while to come out. So, you know, Project Moon kind of made a joke about it to be like, oh, we're just hanging around on the coast doing nothing because we're still working on the Kanto. But in universe, right, in canon, these two characters, Ishmael and Faust, should they not have perhaps mentioned this shit, given everyone, forced everyone even, to have a fucking crash course on the Great Lake before we set off. That lack of preparation rankles me. Now, I don't actually blame Ishmael and Faust for this, because I know for a fact that the Sinners probably would have been like, oh yeah, whatever, may they may well, even though it hasn't been specifically stated, they may well have even tried to do that, and everyone just went, it's just water, who cares? So everyone's kind of to blame here, you know? <laughs> These two should have actually made an attempt to provide that information more than Ishmael making a little pamphlet and mentioning it once, and uh, Faust should have tried, but also everyone else should have been more receptive. And it's these exact problems that are going to lead to problems down the road, I imagine. What? Why? <laughs> You're not allowed to write down the laws? <laughs> That's so stupid. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Well, good. I guess at least someone will. 
만약 새긴다는 의미가 경험이 아닌 문신의 의미라면 그 또한 문제가 됩니다. Smart idea though. 해당 사례로 유사의 금기 사냥꾼들이 파견된 적도 있으니까요. 모든 규칙은 구전으로만 옮겨지는 편이 안전합니다. Why are we not allowed to write them down? <laughs> What have you been doing all this time, Ishmael? 작사를 갈고 있었어요. Aha. Uh -huh. The harpoon, so you can spear the whale. 더 날카로워야 하니까요. Uh -huh. 스치기만 해도 살아 있다는 사실이 후회스러울 정도로 고통스럽게 만들어 줄 거니까. Right. 그럼 그냥 처박치긴 하지 왜 기어 나오는 건데? <웃음> wow. 그대로 처박혀 있다간 누가 내려 흔적도 없어진 당신들을 구경할 것 같아서요. Distinctly possible. 별로 유쾌하지 않거든요. 그런 걸또 보는 건. 아하. Uh -huh. 그리고 호수에 대해 뭣도 모르는 사람들끼리 배를 주물럭거리면서 시간만 축내는 꼬락선이를 더는 못 봐주겠으니까. We sure do just kind of stand around and do nothing, don't we? Kind of like right now, in fact. Even though it's been a long time since the incident at the boatworks, her biting yet anxious lectures have not dulled at all. It's like the one thing she has. I was afraid that she might stir up trouble among the sinners again. Okay, fine. But she was out here with the rest of us, and I wanted to believe that that was more than enough. I decided not to question her further. <sighs> what specifically? Ishmael walked up to the helm. Is this a sailing boat? It doesn't look like a sailing boat. That's not inaccurate. <laughs> Otis, let's hear her out. She's actually been here before. <laughs> you got lucky, Swabby. <laughs> Once I get my hook hand, then you're in trouble. <laughs> okay, Ishmael, tell us. How are we not smooth sailing? We've got the wind at our backs. That's no wind, it's a space station. Um, we're getting dragged. <laughs> Is there a whirlpool? <laughs> dragged? By what? <laughs> Those ships? Ooh. Are there like pirates who drag ships in with some kind of giant vacuum cleaner and then steal their blobfish? Scoundrels. Oh god, more story. I thought we were approaching a combat encounter. <laughs> Fuck do I know. The Resonance Tuning Fork. Ah, oh, yeah, we did hear mention of this earlier, didn't we? Just like Ishmael said, two massive vessels were approaching us not far from where we were. We're not exactly on a collision course with them, though. Ishmael didn't entertain me with an answer. Instead, she took the helm and threw it wildly in one direction. Whoa! I don't think this boat turns on a dime, Dante. I don't think it would have been that dramatic. <gasps> Splashy drifter! Did she actually drift the boat? That's pretty fucking radical. She can pilot the boat. Oh boy. Hold up. Did one of you say bug? I take offense to that. Because of the resonance tuning forks? I don't fucking know. Like a railway? Some kind of railway that refracts light? Obviously, I don't think this is a refraction well railway. It was a joke. All right, it was a joke. Chill. So Ishmael turns the Mephistopheles helm around to the opposite direction of the two ships. We were still moving towards them. We were getting dragged even faster by them. That's not great. And there was nothing we could do about it. Nothing. So we all stood there and had another visual novel cutscene instead of doing anything about it. Is she reverse drifting? That works too. What? 
개들이 합쳐지는 건가요? Are those ships making a baby ship? 야, 이 미친 새끼야! <웃음> 지금 짜브라지가 생겼는데 그런 한가로운 감성이 나와? 어, 이 물개! 큰 소리를 그렇게 치더니 이제 어떻게? I like the how they're all acting like she didn't mean to do this or anything, and it's, it's obvious this is precisely what she's intending. 좀 닥쳐요. Shush. You don't know shit. Be quiet. 잡아당겨지고 있을 때를 최대한 이용할 거예요. 그리고 Ah, quite the gambit. <laughs> We're going to be smooshed. Immediately before the crash, Ishmael deftly revved the engine and adjusted several levers in a series of decisive motions before speeding us between and past the two vessels. Promptly making Heathcliff and Otis feel extremely foolish. Ooh. Ah. Well, better than the rest of the ship, eh? The ship's stern was crushed, but it was better than getting completely sandwiched between those two ships. Honestly, a self-reconstructing ship is really fucking handy. Look! Look! In the roach! It's the roach! Amazing. And they did delete a part of our ship, Gregor, yes. It's like we never even had a stern. I took another look at where the stern used to be. It was as the sinners said. The stern wasn't crushed. It was effectively deleted as though it had never been there. It left a bizarre looking cross section behind. They made a fork that deletes things. I don't know. This sounds very confusing. Which presumably causes a lot of chaos. <laughs> Ishmael, I want you on the helm the entire fucking voyage. <laughs> like, straight up. No, 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 you just saved all of our lives. No, no, it's good. You're good. That's fine. That's great. What you did was a big great. Very good. Happy with you. 100%. This is precisely what I wanted slash hoped to see from you. 100%. What? Which you mean you weren't trying to? You were trying to save the ship that you are on by proxy, trying to save everyone, basically. I get what she's saying, though. I don't care about anyone else. I was just doing it for survival. But yeah, thanks. Ah, Sure, 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 sure. Wrecked. <laughs> Wait, you mean Ishmael wasn't trying to save the ship? <laughs> oh, Captain, my Captain. I didn't do shit. <laughs> Downcast and shoulders slumped, Otis made her way into the ship's cabins, formerly the bus cabins. Wait, we just made it to the port, and all we had to contend with was a little bit of potential smushing? Faust's voice was dry and emotionless, as though what had just happened didn't affect her one bit. Wow, it's so big. One off? Hong Lu was right. We were approaching a massive ship, so large that it could almost be mistaken for an island. Whichever was the case, it was clear that the port was a megastructure built from countless metal shipping containers. Oh, 
He definitely seems to have gotten over that seasickness, he's saying. He's recovered enough to start talking weird again. Huh? <sighs> I mean, if it's a seafaring vessel that moves, it does it not qualify as a ship? Can't help but agree there. Ishmael, does that count as a ship in the Great Lake? Well, there you go. There's a lot of whales, apparently. Cool, good, great, well, uh, we're doing fine. Ah, what's anyone, everyone worried about? Obviously, it's going to be smooth sailing. Look, there has been, oh, I was about to say, there's been three chapters and not a single combat encounter. We're fine, kidnappers, Jesus Christ. Are we actually going to try and steal those fucking seagulls? Okay, first combat encounter. Obviously, Ishmael up front. It's her fucking canto. <laughs> thought that was Don Quixote for a second. Let's see how the Lure team does. It's been an hour and we haven't played with them yet. Later losers, me and Karen are going to go play mini golf. We have business here and it's called potting tiny golf balls into little holes. Have fun, idiots. As if he's going to tell you. <laughs> yeah. Mermaid perfume? Why? Virgilius said, looking straight at an advertisement before us, so he obviously made it up. Bottles of mermaid perfume extracted straight from their left fins. Special discount. <laughs> Don Quixote, we'd be lucky to get a box of skewers, let alone some fucking perfume. Well, it's not as if there are an abundance of other resources on the fucking lake, is there? Oh, <laughs> ice cream! Sardine whale flavored ice cream. Can't knock it till you try it. I like, I mean, I remember I liked sardines. Was it sardines or anchovies? I can't remember. <laughs> Marlin whale ice cream. Can we go and all be together and be friends? Yi Sang has rapidly evolved from an introvert to an extrovert. You haven't done anything. All you did was punch at Heathcliff a few times. Why are you even on the bus? We don't need you. You do nothing. That is a word you could use to describe Virgilius, yes. Blunt. Maybe you should try getting to know the sinners. I did, and it's been a pretty cool experience. Uh huh. I assume the before team got here like with no troubles whatsoever. And it's rather um embarrassing that we didn't. That we had to fight a million crabs to make a boss modification and then nearly got crushed by like two giant ships and then almost gotten eaten by a changing zone in the lake and Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 
It's a little spooky. I wonder if there are going to be pirates. Foul? Is her foul? So we're just going to stand here looking like a bunch of tourists and hope we don't draw any attention? <laughs> More like a delayed team. <laughs> We're the delayed team. Hmm. Yeah. I'm sure that comment reminded everyone of the same duo. One's in pieces and the other was eaten, presumably. It did for me too. What the fuck? <laughs> Thinking about them even for a brief moment is... <laughs> if elected to sleep in lieu of our appearance. Hmm. Effie Sword, we didn't deserve you to. <laughs> this is our before team. Yeah. A little bit. <sighs> Let's see because our resident lake experts didn't tell us shit until we were halfway across the lake and in danger. Someone from the corner of the shipping container rises from their nap and stretches. They sound oddly aggressive. Huh? My my! Hong Lu, wait! <laughs> Thank you, Hongler. I like looking messy. It's like my one thing. That and sleeping. On that note... What's this sticky red thing on your... On his chest hung an upside down LCCB agent badge. It was soaked in blood. Hmm. You're not the before team, okay. <laughs> you have no idea what Limbus Company is, do you? Cool, so you killed them. Great. <laughs> <laughs> she will, she will do it. Uh huh. How the fuck do you know this? Oh, then we would like him returned post haste, please. I will say please exactly once. Huh. <laughs> it might be your first time doing a ransom rodeo with people who use ego, though. Mate, we're broke. Better luck next time. What if we just body you? <laughs> Even Heathcliff doesn't like you. Oh, 
But we don't have any money. There's not... We don't have any money. I can't stress enough that we don't have any money. Get back to your golden thingy. Oh, how generous. That's probably smart. And also get the guy killed. There's that. We may lose. I don't think we'll lose our jobs, but it won't look good. Mm hmm, mm hmm. The bass in the soundtrack is very nice. There's the base. It kind of has, but I see your point. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, we can sit here and continue to talk about how shitty it is to kidnap someone, or we can come up with a plan. Otis, what happened the last time we went up against quote unquote a powerful local syndicate? We smashed them. I don't know if they were actually a syndicate. I think they were a gang, but shh. Point is, what if we just kill them all? Turn this into a Canto 4 situation in which it's combat encounter after combat encounter after combat encounter. <laughs> That's true, we know fuck all about the place. It isn't his first time, we know he has friends, but we don't know how many. It mentions territory, so it is at least a faction, you know? That's true, they could just be nobodies. That would be a good idea, Heathcliff, but the thing is, we don't know if they're small fries or not. We don't have that intel. Sure, sure. I know Heathcliff, I want to just punch him as well, but uh, evidently it's not going to be that simple. Or maybe it will. So we don't know anything. Great. Oh yes, very much so. Without a doubt. Yeah. All kinds of awful images and ominous speculations begin to overwhelm us. Maybe we should actually try and come up with a plan. The so-called kidnappers were crowding amongst themselves, giggling and chattering. They knew that our options were limited. Okay, then I'm going to start off by asking how much they want. We're out of our element here. The best I can do is try to gather some information, at least. A short, exasperated sigh escaped Ishmael's lips. She had been standing here this whole time, arms crossed over the harpoon that rested upon her chest. Once again, a moment when she could really be helping but isn't, but of course it's because we haven't said that we want her advice and she's doing that whole thing where she's like, I won't provide unsolicited advice, and this is very intentionally unhelpful. <laughs> we don't have any money like i don't know how we would pay them what else can we do even now the hostage well what's the solution then sure <laughs> here we go Okay, 
I mean, it is kind of unnecessary unless you've got a better idea. If you do have a better idea, feel free to share it. And Ishmael makes a good point. They've not given an order. Dante literally hasn't given an order. Dante hasn't done anything. <laughs> this would be a moment for Dante to be like, everyone shut the fuck up. Ishmael, do you have a better idea? If so, let's hear it. If not, I'm going to go ask them about how much they want us to pay. But they won't. Because they don't. Because that's not what Dante does. I'm not criticizing the writing, I'm criticizing Dante. Mm hmm. Ishmael strode toward the kidnappers. It was plain from her tone and expression that she did not care one bit about what the other sinners said. Are you gonna, are you gonna body him? Go ahead and go body him. Body him good. She shot me a fleeting glance before raising her harpoon. <laughs> we have failed in our leadership so fucking badly so that she's like, I actually don't care <laughs> if I'm considered to be an in, in for insubordination. If I'm considered to, you know, well, I'm breaching contract, I'm not following orders. Fuck you, what are you even going to do about it? And the answer is absolutely fucking lutely nothing. Nice. Then thrust her well-sharpened harpoon right into one of the kidnappers' forehead. It's a good stab. You can't be that surprised, Dante. I saw this coming a mile away. The entire course of her action, from start to finish, was so full of absolute confidence that... No one even thought to stop her. I couldn't either. Not that you would have even if it hadn't been. <laughs> Oof. Ryoshi was right. The kidnapper suffered a total obliteration of forehead. No forehead. I mean, she's done it now. Let's jump them. Like, the, the, the course of action has been set. Let's just fucking deal with them. She stabbed his forehead. Sinclair was the first to snap out of this stupefied silence. Sinclair makes a very good point. Sinclair was trembling hard. I couldn't tell if it was the welling tears he was holding back or an uncontrollable fury. Ah, he's not pleased. But here's the thing, Sinclair, she's watched people die before and she doesn't really care about any of us, so yeah. Oh yeah, that must have been an especially um, unpleasant moment for him because, uh, yeah, he's, you know, it just hit him a little harder, you know. Sinclair's memories? Oh, we're actually literally seeing this, okay. I saw an image of Saad and Effie, both smiling. Both were excellent field agents, if a bit smug. And because they were both excellent agents, they suffered to their last moments before our eyes. Helplessly watching as they slowly expired in front of him at his old home at that. That day must have been scorched into his memories. I recalled Ishmael's vision that I witnessed back at the boatworks. Where the whole, her whole crew was getting fucked up when that giant eye thing. Was that also a moment that was burned into her memories, I wonder? I have to assume. It looks pretty significant. Ishmael didn't seem to find Sinclair's questions worth answering. She strode toward one of the closed shipping containers and kicked it open. A body that had been dead for so long that its complexion and consistency barely resembled that of a living human slumped to the floor. Ew. Very well deduced, detective. What else you got? Ishmael kicks the body, tossing it onto its back. So your point is that the pirates would in fact take the money and then kill the hostage anyway? Would it not have been worth saying that earlier instead of doing all this and then acting like it was totally obvious? 
모습만 조금씩 바뀔 뿐 오래전부터 유사 이곳저곳에 뿌리 내려져 있었어요 잡초같이 사방에 아하 오히려 여기서는 해적이라고 부르는 게더 맞는 표현이죠 The shoe fits 인지를 돌려줄 것처럼 계속 돈을 요구하다가 상대에게 더 이상 뜯어낼 게 없을 때 This Ishmael is what you should have said earlier Because then we could have done a coordinated attack on the fucking pirates instead of just letting you wander up and stab one. Even in your moments when you're trying to flex how much you know and how you're so much more confident than it, competent than everyone else, you're actually not acting in an optimal manner. All you need to do is go up to Dante and be like, I've seen these guys before. They keep asking for more and more money until the money dries up and then they kill the hostage anyway. We'd have been right. Uh, we'd have been like, right, okay. Then we need to take them all out as quickly as possible to ensure the hostage's safety. I know, I know, it's not worth harping on about this too much, but I don't appreciate the attempts to act like, oh, I know so much more and you're all idiots, whilst also taking st not stupid actions, but unnecessarily risky actions just to show off. That's what she's doing, she's showing off. Being like, you idiots don't know every anything and I'm the only one who knows anything. Ah, uh, whatever. Ishmael poked the body with her foot. Uh huh. Because you seem to be the only person in in the entirety of the city who thinks this way, Don Quixote. This was not a fishing It is, and that's precisely why the pirates are here. 이런 경우엔 보통 엄청나게 든든한 뒷배가 있는 경우가 많겠지. 그것이 도대체 무슨 관계가 있다는 말이오? 이런 악인들이 도시를 굴러다니는데. Inevitable. 아직 도시의 해결사들이 이 사실을 모르는 것이 틀림없소. 그렇지 않다면 빈곤한 자가 많아 의뢰하지 못했거나. The question is whether or not Ishmael is gonna be like, no, they just don't care. 지금이라도 정의로운 협회에 서신을 보냈다면 음 제발 돈키호테 씨 아직도 그 정의와 악인 타령이에요? 현실이 그렇게 안 보이나요? Oh god, you're really going to do this? This is so entirely unnecessary. You're gonna do the equivalent of telling Don Don Quixote that Santa's not real. You're actually gonna have that moment. You're gonna be the person. 아, 아니야. 아니, 그냥 말하지 마요. 어차피 먹히지도 않을 거. 아, 답답하니까 자꾸 말하게 되네. My biggest problem with Ishmael is that she has so such a high opinion of herself that she doesn't strictly speaking deserve. I'm not saying she's not competent. I'm not saying she's not experienced the most experienced in the team in the ways of the Great Lake and everything around it. But she has such an unbearably high opinion of herself, and su and as a result, such an unbearably low opinion of everyone around her. And I find it, as a personality trait, so repugnant, so repulsive, <laughs> so actually repulsive, which is why I keep breaking restraint and yapping about it. That's why. Because I can't fucking handle it. I get- that's my failing as, I don't know. A viewer, I guess. It's not a criticism of the rising of Ishmael's character. This is precisely who Ishmael was supposed to be. I just don't fucking like it. Ishmael's eyes darted around with wrath, impatience, and anxiety. A metaphorical storm, an amalgamation of senses. I could tell her that her refusal to work with the rest of her team is making it worse, but much like talking to a brick wall, she wouldn't fucking listen. She was billowing wildly and helplessly in the tempest. I cannot even hope to hold her steady. And as a result, I won't even try, apparently. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, no one cares. Yep, let's fuck him up. Let's see what we're working with. Now, we've seen Gregor before. Looks very good. Ishmael also looks very cool here. Ryoshu looks fantastic. I love the stance, Rodia. Very nice. Okay, well, this isn't going to be difficult, is it, really? Probably not. Actually, maybe I shouldn't be so confident. 
I mean, dominating, unopposed. I do like to start with a bit of a self-destructive purge. I do, I do. Admittedly, I just kind of do. Perfected Death Fist. Yeah, I want to see that. And I want to see that as well. Oh, I missed this. <laughs> Who cares? He's been staggered already. I'll do it. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Fantastic. Very nice. Go on. Oof. 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 He's fucking dead. <laughs> The issue I find is that I want to like Ishmael. I really fucking do. I really, really want to like her, but I can't. I'm struggling with it more, and that was very fucking cool. I'm struggling with it more and more in every video. That I so desperately want to like her, and I can't. I cannot. I cannot bring myself to do it. She's got a great appearance. She's cool. She's competent. She's strong. There is every reason there where I'm like, I should like this character but I don't. Everything else about her just pisses me off. Something chronic. Personality traits that I would despise in a human being if I met them in real life. An overinflated self-opinion. Looking down on the people around them. A refusal to work with the people around them. I find it, personally, to be so painfully insufferable that I can't handle it. I really, really, really hope, really genuinely hope you don't understand how much I do. Oh, that was good. I really fucking hope, hang on. Ooh, ooh, yeah. I really fucking hope my opinion changes by the end of this canto. I really fucking do. I desperately want to be wrong in my appraisal of her character. So, so much I want to be wrong. I'm scared that I'm not wrong. That's what I'm scared of, is that I'm right. I don't want to be right. I want to be wrong. But I'm worried that I'm not. And it's a good thing we just ended the fight because I was not keeping track of uh, Sinclair's fucking SP. So he was about to fucking distort. Whoops. <laughs> or corrode. The term is corrode, not distort. And and even now, he's still getting the highest damage contributed because I forgot how fucking good Enclair is. Oh, we are getting... Oh, I mean, it's only 50, but that's still handy. Oh, God, the lure move sets are fucking incredible. Rodeo is an absolute hero. Let me see this full move. Oh, yeah! God damn, that's good. Oh, yeah. Oh, have him. <laughs> Amazing. How you doing, Sinclair? Oh, you're doing just fine. No worries. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what we all expected. Very nice. Liked it a lot. Oh, yeah, do it. Do it. Oh, we didn't get the final bit. It upsets me. Like, uh, you have to understand how painful it is for me when I'm like, Lur Ishmael is so fucking cool. But I hate how the character is so much. It troubles me sometimes when I look at the character of Ishmael and I'm like, I feel like some people look at this, like the way she acts during this canto, and think it's cool to be such a fucking repulsive human being. To be so, like, oh man, insulting everyone around you and treating them like shit is cool. Yeah, I want to be like that, and it's like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> I am so not concerned. You, you're, yeah, you're gonna die. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I had a whole speech prepared. So yeah, I'm guessing that the hostage is not here. So we will need to go talk to their boss to find out. See, a moment like this, I'm like, good, you know? 
she's literally doing what Dante should be doing and is not. This container doesn't have to be able to do anything. It doesn't have to be able to do anything. It doesn't have to be able to do anything. Mountains of rotten corpses. Yeah, I'm familiar with this concept. Can you do that? <laughs> Can you? Can you even still see? I wasn't sure when she picked it up, but Ishmael was carrying a travel brochure of Marlin Port. She shoved it in the pirate's face, who struggled for a moment before pointing to a location on the map. As soon as her trembling finger reached the paper, Ishmael, wait. <laughs> I don't disapprove of that at all. Fuck the pirates. Ishmael walked out, leaving nothing but shipping containers full of both old and fresh bodies behind. Well, the moment they find out about this, uh, well, it's hard to say. They might keep it as a bargaining chip to be like, look, Fuck off and we'll give you them back or something. I doubt it. They probably have more confidence than that, but it's a little tenuous, Gregor, not gonna lie. Which is awkward because we don't even have enough money to buy food half the time. <laughs> they took one look at Gregor's five month shadow on his face and were like, yeah, they're poor. Just kill him. I suppose. I mean, you know, I'm gonna have to- I'm 100% gonna give Ishmael some credit here. If we didn't take this course of action, we wouldn't have even found his corpse, and he would have definitely still died, so... We kinda had to do this, you know? I hear what you're saying, Sinclair, but he would have died if we didn't take this course of action. I can't think, personally, of another course of action that would have allowed us to potentially save the guy with the information we now have. But that's kind of the point in that Ishmael should have explained this before taking action. But she has such a low opinion of the rest of the team and is so up herself that she was like, oh, only I can do this. You're all idiots. Just watch me do it. And I'm like, fuck off. <laughs> Sinclair is a smart boy. Sinclair is a very smart boy. Smart man. Don't let me don't let me place any less value on you than you deserve, Sinclair. Smart man. Faust. <laughs> I am listening. It's the thing I do. Should we do something? Is she going to be okay? I mean, Ishmael. I, I guess something would be better than nothing. Well, there you go. I thought that was a very productive course of action right now. Well, yeah, but, you know, what's the course of action then? After we've rescued the agent, we go, Right, Ishmael, I'm putting my foot down and confining you to your quarters for the remainder of the voyage. And then we do a really shit job at the voyage, and then she comes out and saves us all, and then her worldview is reinforced. Great. Otis, you're always on my side. Maybe a little too much. Pretty much always, now that I think about it. Well, that's kind. I don't know if I can manage Ishmael anymore. I just don't. Though it looked like she was acting rash, maybe it was. Maybe she knew the right thing to do in this scenario. If Ishmael suddenly decides to quit or something, then, uh, well, my blood pressure would go back down, so that'd be good. Faust will doubtless proceed to educate me on the various clauses that prevent Ishmael from quitting. But it's not like I could force her to come along should this hostility escalate. Besides, she'd already acted without my orders earlier. 
She did say that she'd follow my orders, but I wasn't sure how long that would last. Maybe if you gave her an order, she wouldn't feel so inclined to do them herself. You haven't actually given her a single fucking order since this voyage started. None of that matters because, I don't know, I really like to kiss up to whoever's in command. Well, I appreciate this might stem from a limited understanding, but once we get the golden bow bow of Ucorp, we don't specifically need Ishmael anymore. <laughs> she served her purpose by that point. Speaking completely hypothetically, of course, that there, there was there is no reality in which they were going to remove Ishmael from the fucking roster or have a quit. But I'm just saying, you know, from the perspective of these characters in this moment, that is a thing. Are you saying that we leave Ishmael? An odyssey, you could even say. I mean, they already have. We lost Sword and Effie. Uh huh. She smoothly added the last part, but. But there was a growing suspicion at the back of my mind that maybe not everyone felt a sense of belonging from this group. Yeah, what was your first clue? Maybe I was the only one who sought a sense of belonging from them, that we'd fight as one no matter what ordeal this journey threw in our way. But we will leave it there, ladies and gentlemen, and pick it up next time. Canto 5 has begun. It's a damn good one. And I'm going to do this very quickly because no one wants to hear me yap about it for too long. If you like Ishmael, that's fine. But let me point out, because this is important, and I think this is a this is something that maybe may have made all of this seem a bit weird to you guys, but this is not this is the first time during this and the interval. This is the first time I've expressed my displeasure at Ishmael's general attitude. This is not the first time I felt it. Let me be fucking clear. From Canto 1, from the very beginning, I was like, God, this person's a fucking downer. God, she really talks down to everyone around her. It is occasionally funny, mostly obnoxious. It's like Faust. She's kind of like Faust in a different way. Her gimmick is occasionally funny, mostly either dry or obnoxious. In fact, in my mind right now, Faust is above Ishmael. Because at least Faust is productive in what she says. Ishmael has all of the necessary info here. She is the most experienced with Ucorp, with the Great Lake, all of that. Look, let me round this off finally, okay? First of all, every grievance I've had against Ishmael is my opinion. These are not facts. I am not presenting you with facts. These are opinions. Second of all, I just don't like her. That's it. That's it. That is it. There's no more to it than that. I just don't like her <laughs> at all. I don't like her attitude, I don't like the way she treats people. I had a mild problem with Otis being too dismissive towards the rest of the team in the last one, but Otis kind of brings it back and has other gimmicks. Ishmael is just a downer. Before this canto, before the interval, I'm not talking about from the moment she realized we were going to the Great Lake, I mean before this. She was a downer. She was a self-righteous, self-important, I'm far more important than anyone else on her high horse downer and has been the whole fucking game, and that's why I don't like her. If you do like her, that's fine, but if you try and convince me that these are good personality traits that make her enjoyable to interact with, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna buy that. Not for a second, but... <laughs> tumultuous beginning to the canto aside, I still like the canto, it's very good, and I should point out that just because I don't like a character doesn't mean they're badly written, it's just that it doesn't resonate with me, personally some random guy so who fucking cares i'm gonna end it there ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for watching we will be picking this up again soon it's good to finally be here i'm waiting for the fucking difficulty spike i've heard that from some people that it starts in the second half of the canto and from other people that the only really difficult part is the end of the dungeon I don't fucking know who's right. I'm not even trying to figure out who's right anymore because I always get conflicting reports on these kinds of things. I'm just going to fucking go for it. 
And I hope you're there with me. Thank you so much for watching. Special thanks to List Potatoes, Proxy, Kamenera, Heartland, Harak J, Dresso, Sion Distance, Lol, Final Legend, Etherbin, Linky, Zeon Cita, Bimblewart, Machoko, My Moon, Alkir, Sweet Baby Red, Jessica Kitty, Plutonium Pie, Dreamer Ghost, Lepa Lullaby, K Bub, Magic Owl, The Frostbite, Monsoon, Warmar Soku, SCP 106A, Nomad, and Kenny T800 for supporting me on Patreon. Thank you so much, guys. And thank you all so much for watching. I cannot stress how much I've tried to jump, like, actually jump. On every good moment that Ishmael's had because I don't want to dislike her. I've tried so hard to be like, oh no, she did this. This is cool. Uh, I like this. But it is drowned in a tide of everything she does that annoys me. I can't. And I'm not going to pretend that it's not the case anymore. I have pretended for the entire fucking game and I'm not doing it anymore. If she turns around, fantastic. But as it currently stands, even if her knowledge of the Great Lake is the thing that saves the day and it's like, oh, she's like this because of her trauma, that does not make her any more of a likable character in my eyes. I'm sorry. I really want to be wrong and I hope I am. But whatever happens next time, hope I see you there. Doodles. Goodbye.